The clarinet player is Jim McGaw. The tune, as time goes by. His passion, the mind, and how it's shaped by memory. Everything that we do as humans depends upon our memory. Your notion of, of your own past is nothing but a memory in your brain. Something changed in your brain. You and I live in, in a world which is about a half a second long. That's the immediate experience. And what happened uh, two minutes ago that you think is still here is gone except in your brain. This rat at the University of California, Irvine, is about to get a better memory thanks to Jim McGaw. There's food at the end of four of these arms. Entrances to each of the other four are blocked by a plastic window. Once the rat has eaten the available food, the windows are removed and food is placed in the previously blocked channels. After several trials, the rat learns to enter only the newly opened arms, ignoring the old ones it had already cleaned out. Eighteen hours later, however, the rat has forgotten the secret and checks out the old arms as well as the new. But this rat is getting some help, a shot of adrenaline immediately after learning the task. This time, after an 18-hour absence, his memory of the maze was as good as new. He remembered where he had been before and only went to the arms that he hadn't been to. So he performed the task very well, perfectly, 100% performance. Adrenaline is the hormone responsible for the fight or flight response, the surge of energy we and other animals get when we're threatened. Jim McGaw's experience with rats suggests the adrenaline rush is doing more than allowing us to run fast. It also would be a very good idea to be able to remember where the predator was and what happened so that the next time that animal can avoid that situation or to minimize the probability of being eaten the next time. So the same hormones which were involved in generating the fight or flight response, we now have discovered work on the brain so as to make stronger memories. So what would happen in a stressful situation, which for rats means having to swim, if somehow adrenaline is removed from the picture? This rat is trying to find a transparent underwater platform. Eventually, he has to be shown where it is. Three days later, and he finds the platform quickly. Like his colleague, this rat has also been shown the platform. But moments later, he gets an injection of a drug, a beta blocker that blocks the effects of adrenaline. When this rat's tested three days later, it's as if he's never been here before. So for rats, adrenaline seems central to making stronger memories. But what about the rest of us? What we need to do is to have two different stories. Jim McGaw is collaborating with Larry Cahill on an experiment that involves a single set of slides telling two very different stories. A boy and a mother leaving home. They're going to visit a uh, father who works in the hospital. If I could have your left hand... A subject is told his emotional reactions to a story are to be measured. In fact, this device isn't hooked up to anything. Okay. A mother and her son are leaving home in the morning. The story he hears is bland. She is taking him to visit his father's workplace. The father is the chief laboratory technician at a nearby hospital. It concludes with mother and son coming across a fake car accident being used in a training drill. Special makeup artists were able to create realistic looking injuries on actors for the drill. Okay, that was very good. Now, the last thing I would like you to do today is to rate your emotional reaction to the story you just saw on a scale of zero to 10. Probably about a two. Okay. She's taking him to visit his father. This subject is hearing a very different story. 
While crossing the road, the boy is struck by a runaway car, which critically injures him. Specialized surgeons were able to successfully reattach the boy's severed feet. I'd like you to rate your emotional reaction, your personal emotional reaction to the story you just saw. A seven. A seven, okay. Two weeks later, the subjects are given a surprise memory test. You were told that the father's occupation is a school teacher, a surgeon, a laboratory technician, a hospital custodian. A laboratory technician. Memories of the emotional okay. story are good. Next question. You were told that the father's occupation is a school teacher, a surgeon, Memories of the boring story are poor. Mm. I think it was the hospital custodian. hospital custodian. So far, so good. But is it adrenaline that's making the difference? There's the pill, and there's some water right This there. subject is taking a beta blocker to block adrenaline right before getting the emotional version of the slideshow. While crossing the road, the boy is struck by a runaway car, which critically injures him. At the hospital, the staff prepare the emergency room. He still rates the story as highly emotional. I'd say about a seven. Seven? Okay, very good. But when he's tested two weeks later, his memory is as poor as those who heard the bland story. A surgeon, a laboratory technician, or a hospital custodian? Um, a surgeon. Surgeon? Okay. Despite the fact that their emotional reaction to the story a week earlier had been normal, they didn't experience the enhanced memory associated with the emotional reaction that the placebo controls did. So what we seem to have done, what we think we have done, <clears throat> is we snapped the relationship between uh, an emotional reaction and enhanced long-term memory. Okay, and let's go. The Irvine team is now trying to pin down the relationship between emotion and memory by looking inside the brain as a memory is formed. Shannon is left alone to watch 30 minutes of unpleasant images while glucose is injected into her bloodstream. What I'd like to do now is to lay you down. This, this machine, called a PET scanner, produces an image of Shannon's brain, revealing where most of the glucose was being used, and so which part of her brain was working hardest. And the region that was most active is an almond-sized structure called the amygdala. What's more, in tests like this with several subjects, the brighter the amygdala, the better their memory of the film three weeks later. It's the beginning of an explanation, Jim McGaw believes, of why we remember emotional events. Activated by the hormones the emotions produce, the amygdala sends a message to the rest of the brain as if to say, this information is important. Don't forget it. Life goes by, trivial things happen to us. Important things happen to us. Now, it would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it, because we have a, a brain that probably has some limited capacity of some kind. Wouldn't it be nice to have a brain which stored to a more intense extent those things that are important and to a lesser extent those, that, those things that are trivial? We, we have a brain that does that. And it's emotions that create the relationship between the importance of an event and how well we remember that event. 